you're gonna try to analyze it from an investor's perspective, it will always boil down to the amount of use, amount of apps that are built on it, and people using the apps because more activity will actually translate into more usage of the Matic token, supply and demand, more people who need to buy it will actually bring the prices up. If there's not a lot of use for it, in the same way not a lot of people are willing to buy it, then the possibility of it pushing higher may not be there as well. Hey guys, so in this video, I want to talk about Polygon slash Matic. But before I discuss that, I want to go to the underlying reason on why is it essential. And I've been making a lot of videos talking about Ethereum's high gas fees and its problems towards scalability. That's why there's a lot of other smart contract blockchains like Solana, Avalanche, Polkadot, Cardano, Algorand, and so much more trying to somehow deal with the inefficiencies that Ethereum currently has. Please do note though that once Ethereum hits E2.0, all of these problems will be gone as well. So one of the things that I'm actually thinking of also and trying to analyze Polygon slash Matic, this is good right now given that Ethereum is a proof of work, given that it has some scaling solutions, but how relevant and how big will it be later on when ETH transitions to proof of stake, ETH becomes cheaper, and it becomes more scalable. Anyways, to make it super simple, Matic slash Polygon is basically a layer 2 scaling solution built on Ethereum. So people would always say that it's a parallel chain, but what I want you to picture out so that it's easier for you to be able to understand and picture it, think about an expressway, which is Ethereum, which is the main blockchain, which not a lot of cars, trucks, buses can ride and pass at very, very fast speeds because it's narrow and because that's the underlying infrastructure of highway below. Enter the layer 2 scaling solution slash sidechain which is Polygon slash Matic. If this is the main highway, it's a skyway built on top of it that it doesn't change any of the underlying conditions that's going on in Ethereum but it's using and leveraging whatever there is in Ethereum. But since it's a skyway built on top of it, it's generally faster and the fees are actually lower. So from a high level perspective, that's what I want you to see when you're looking at and analyzing Polygon. It's something that's built of Ethereum to make transactions cheaper, faster, and more scalable. It's currently using a proof of stake mechanism, which is one of the reasons why it could transact faster, which is why it could scale better. One of the things that's interesting also for Polygon is that it supports the Ethereum Virtual Machine or EVM, meaning again, just so you can picture it out, it would be easier for dApps that are currently in Ethereum to be used also in Polygon. To give you an example, and I, I think I said this already in another video, for the sake of those who have not heard this, think about MetaMask. MetaMask was primarily built for Ethereum, but because there are other blockchains that are EVM compliant like BSC and Avalanche, you can actually use BSC and Avalanche in MetaMask. That being said, you can also use Polygon slash Matic in your MetaMask browser extension, or your mobile wallet. I think that's one of the biggest advantage of having something that's EVM compatible. In terms of adaptability, it will allow its usage to increase at a much faster pace. A lot of the DeFi protocols that are available already in Ethereum from SushiSwap, Aave, Curve are already also available in Polygon. And for those who love transacting via NFTs, what matters to end users is it's easier to use, it's faster, and it becomes cheaper because a lot of end users really don't see what's underneath or they don't really care about what's underneath. When you go into OpenSea, you would see that it's just a button that you would tick, that you have an option to be able to sell your NFT via Ethereum, which when you do that, the gas fees will be higher, transaction times will be slower, or you also have another option to do it via Polygon, which will be a fraction of the cost and it will be cheaper. So it sounds very grand and very technical if you look at it under the hood, but from a user perspective, it's just a button that people will just stick 
when they decide to transact as well. So going further and doing a deep dive on Polygon, I, I want to say this. The Polygon framework supports two major types of Ethereum-compatible networks. You have your secured chain and your standalone chain. When I say a secured chain, think about it as a roll-up, while an example of a standalone chain is a sidechain. Secured chain, roll-up, standalone chain, sidechain. Secured chains rely on infrastructure of the chain they are attached to, so they don't have to adapt their own security model. In contrast, Standalone chains have to take care of their own security. If you try to analyze it, secured chains have a higher level of security, while the standalone chains are lesser offer security, but they're more flexible. Uh, between the two, there's no right or wrong solution because it would highly be dependent on the dApps that will be running on it and the, I guess the use of that particular app as well. Drilling deeper on the Polygon network, it's basically a sidechain secured by its own set of validators or a validator pool, and it has its own checkpoints to Ethereum from time to time. So since it's a sidechain, it has to take care of its own security, and it also has to touch base with Ethereum altogether. What's interesting about that is, especially for those who want to look at the entirety of how Polygon can be, their network will expand into ZK rollups or zero knowledge rollups, optimistic rollups, and validum chains. Now, Polygon is the sidechain, but the token is Matic, similar to Ethereum and ETH. Ethereum is the blockchain, ETH is the coin, ETH is the token, Polygon is the chain, Matic is the token. Whatever transactions that's going on inside the chain, Matic will be used to pay for whatever fees that's there. If you're gonna try to analyze it from an investor's perspective, it will always boil down to the amount of use, amount of apps that are built on it, and people using the apps because more activity will actually translate into more usage of the Matic token, supply and demand, more people who need to buy it will actually bring the prices up. If there's not a lot of use for it, in the same way not a lot of people are willing to buy it, then the possibility of it pushing higher may not be there as well. So for those who are asking also right now, December 2021, and for those who are tracking the price of Matic, we've seen the price start to push up over the course of the past few days in December 2021. So putting it all together, the value of Polygon is in its ability to scale Ethereum, its ability to make transactions faster because it's passing through its own sidechain, and the cost not paying for Ethereum gas fees makes it relatively cheaper to transact, especially for people who are entering the cryptocurrency market for the very, very first time, or those who want to buy NFTs but not pay for very, very expensive gas fees and at least have exposure to the NFT market as a whole. So there, as what I've mentioned earlier, the risk I think for this will be, and the things that need to be considered for this is, how relevant will it be once Ethereum goes to E2.0? How relevant it will be when there are other blockchains like Avalanche, Solana, Polkadot that are there to actually tackle, that are L1 solutions that are actually there to somehow no, do the things that Ethereum can't do. So let me know your thoughts. I wanna know your ideas on this, if this is something that's interesting for you, if you're a fan of Polygon and Matic, or will you just buy the other L1 solutions? Are you team L1 or are you team L2? Let me know in the comment section below. I wanna hear your thoughts. If you guys have questions as well, put them down below and I'll answer them on a future video. If you guys wanna learn more about cryptocurrencies, we have tons of videos in the description. If you wanna learn technical analysis, we have a recorded Zoom course that's available for all of you. If you want to learn technical analysis and the books that I've written, I've written five books all about investing. That's all for you as well. So I hope that this is something that's insightful. If you guys have any requests on a token or a coin that you want to analyze, feel free to let me know and I'll try to make videos on top of that. And I guess that's it for now. This is Marvin Germo. I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon and God bless you all.